I've heard of people describing their marathon training cycles as dumpster fires, but I didn't think that they meant it literally. It's like watching my marathon goals go up into flames because as you will see, this training cycle was tough. Ooh, I know today was a hot run, but it's a little ridiculous. Oh, but don't worry. It looks like it's a drill. There's some firefighters back there, but it did freak me out for a little bit. Welcome back to my channel. In this vlog, I'm going to recount how the last eight weeks of training for the Surf City Marathon went. I was just barely two weeks out of the California International Marathon when I dove back into marathon training. The turnaround time between the two races was short. Good morning. It's December 14th and we're seven weeks away from Surf City. I'm actually here in Anaheim at the JW Marriott for a work conference but I'm still gonna go out for a run because I have to. This is a really nice hotel. I was all comfy and warm in my bed, but now I gotta go out in the California cold morning and do the run. Trust me, it was more tempting to stay in bed at this luxurious hotel close to Disneyland. Okay, so we're gonna go for a Disney run without going to Disney. But it was the prospect of running near Disneyland that was motivating me to get out early. Also, there was a small group of us at the conference who wanted to get a run in, and you know how effective running in a group is. There's the backstage of Disneyland where all the magic happens. Think of this as a poor runner's version of a Disney race where we're running around the perimeter. Sorry, no photos in front of the Sleeping Beauty castle. Okay, just completed my first interval. Kinda had to break away from the group that I'm running with. We'll just cut through downtown Disney instead and admire the outside of the Disneyland Hotel. We ran through the ticketing area for the Disney California Adventures Park. At least I got to see some hidden Mickeys, so this was the extent of our makeshift Disney run before the conference. Just like that, four miles done around Disneyland. I know we didn't see very much of Disneyland because they keep it pretty well covered because, you know, obviously if you're gonna be paying over $100, you wanna keep it exclusive from runners like me. So far, it seemed like a smooth reintroduction to the marathon training cycle. It seemed like the next seven weeks were gonna be promising. I mentioned my last video about CIM 2023. I am retiring these vapor flies. So no, they're no longer my racing shoes. Instead, they're gonna be my speed workout shoes and my long run shoes. It's December 29th, so five weeks before the Surf City Marathon. I'm here on my 12 mile run. So I'm building up my mileage after running CIM like three and a half weeks ago or something like that. Today's goal is to keep this run nice and easy and somewhat evenly paced. So just keep it within my easy pace range. Twelve miles knocked out with even pacing. Whew, 12 miles down and I finished on an uphill so that's why I'm a little breathless. And I had completed the assignment so broke up this 12 miler into three intervals of four miles with each interval getting a little faster but not you know trying to exceed the top end of my easy pace. So this long run here uh, building up confidence for the next five weeks. I have a few more long runs before Surf City. Then disaster struck as over the next few weeks, I had all sorts of plumbing problems in my house. It's like the saying, when it rains, it pours. I was also very busy at work, so having to deal with the increased workload while having my home worked on added to the already stressful marathon training period. It's like Newton's first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia states that an object at rest or in motion will stay that way unless acted upon by a net external force or an unbalanced force. 
boy, it required a lot of force to get me going for this 14 miler. Good afternoon. It is January 5th, so less than one month away from Surf City Marathon. The issue is, I think I'm getting a little burnt out. Burnt out, burnt out from work, because it's been really crazy lately. And then, you know, on top of it, you know, ramping up for the marathon. Yeah, my alarm went off at five this morning, but I kept hitting the snooze button and slept right through it, or through the snooze alarm multiple times. But you know what, that's what my body needs. I needed to get some rest. So, you know, here we are, running the long run at 1 p.m. Even though I did complete this 14 miler, just the feeling of getting out there in the afternoon felt like a failure. I had expected to get out early for this workout. And we continue to have more plumbing problems with now the outside valve leaking. How do you deal with training for a marathon when it feels like everything around you is falling apart? Good afternoon. It's January 12th, three weeks before the Surf City Marathon. And once again, I got off to a late start, but that's okay. I'm actually enjoying this afternoon run. Yes, at a 16 miler, which is what I'm going to peak at on this training cycle. It was really cold early this morning, like in the 40s and windy. So I didn't want to go out and do my run in those conditions because that's not how it's going to be at Surf City. I want to simulate the racing conditions as much as possible. And I know that 10 mile beach path, which everybody hates, is usually very sunny and it gets warm at that point. So that's what I'm trying to imitate here. Also, I got some speed work built in later into this run, so I didn't want to run into any headwind. Even though I had tried avoiding the winds from earlier in the morning, I ended up encountering all these sand dunes on the running path that disrupted my speed work. Oh my gosh, I really hate these, I hate these sand dunes. They're really messing up. My pace is here because as soon as I can hit a stride, I gotta slow down. Oh, gosh, and there's still some more over there. Not quite the 16 miler I was hoping for. Okay, 16 miles down, not the greatest workout. I didn't hit the paces I needed to hit. I was supposed to hit around 820s during the. Um, full marathon uh, intervals and I got like anywhere between 8.33 and 8.38 and it felt like a struggle to get there. I still have one more long run next week and that's pretty much it and then a couple more speed work sessions where it won't be as long so hopefully I can get it together for Surf City. A little change in scenery later that evening was needed to clear my mind. However, I still felt like I was on the losing end. Nothing like refueling with a lobster roll to pick up my spirits. Good morning. It is January 19th, two weeks before Surf City Marathon, and I'm here on a 14 mile race simulation run. Just doing the warm up part. I'm just really happy that this is my last long run in this training cycle because I'm over it with all these long runs. Just been feeling, I don't know, a little burnt out, a little exhausted because, you know, coming before this, I finished a tough and long training cycle with CIM. Then I only have like two weeks of recovery and then now back to this, which you guys have already figured out with all of my other long runs in this vlog. So the plan for today's last long run is four miles warm up and then I do four miles of progression pace. Start at 8.25 all the way down to 8.15 recovery and then two miles at 7.40 pace. So still a pretty tough workout even though this isn't the 20 miler 
But you know, that's the reality of training for a marathon. Not all runs I'm going to be, you know, feeling excited to jump out of bed for. But at least today, I got out a little earlier than my past uh, long runs. So it's still morning as I'm starting this and not in the afternoon. A sign of burnout is a persistent feeling of exhaustion, even after rest days. You might find yourself dreading your runs, feeling unmotivated, or experiencing a decline in performance. It's important to recognize these symptoms early so you can get some self-care. And this was my last long run and I wasn't too happy with my performance. Whew, and that's it. 14 miles, the last long run for the Surf City Marathon training cycle, done. Overall, that was an okay workout. I hit my uh, progression paces just fine, but I did have a hard time with the speed intervals. Couldn't quite get to 740. One of the laps was 814, and then the second lap was 758. Oh well, close enough, I guess. But, you know, for race day, I'm not gonna be running, you know, under eight. So, if anything, hopefully, it'll feel really easy or easy enough to run my goal race pace. But overall, I'm proud that uh, through this training cycle, I actually completed all of my long runs. Uh, you know, the motivation wasn't really there because, you know, I think I'm a little burnt out. But the important thing is I got up and completed them. And that's what makes a marathoner. You know, we do the hard things. I mean, it would have been much easier to cut the run short or just you know, stay in bed, but no, we don't do that because we're marathoners. It's 12 days before the Surf City Marathon and I was supposed to go out for a three mile easy run. However, I'm gonna have to put that on hold because I found out I have a leak in my garbage disposal. It's just been a frustrating month because I've been having all sorts of plumbing issues that I'm becoming friends with my local plumber, just like my running coach. We're a week out from the Surf City Marathon, so this is the perfect time to test my shoes. This is what I will be wearing to run. It'll be the Nike Vaporfly, the third edition. I've always raced with the Vaporflies because I like how fast they make me feel. Although I am a little concerned about this little hole here. Hopefully no rocks get caught into it. It's pretty light. Whoop. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's pretty light. So long, Vaporfly number twos. Hello there, Vaporfly number three. And so far, feels pretty good putting on the first shoe. <laughs> so we're nine days away from Surf City Marathon and I'm doing my last longest run, which is seven miles, but there's a workout involved. I gotta do one minute of the 10K pace and then five minutes of my marathon race pace times five. So far these Vaporfine threes feel really good. They do feel fast because they're light. I'm doing my warm up, but I'm going a little faster than I should. So I'm trying to slow down. That was the first workout in a long time that I felt strong and actually hit my paces. And that is it for my last longish run for this Surf City Marathon training cycle. It was hard work, but I did hit the paces, so it is giving me a little bit more of a confidence boost than I've been feeling for the last several weeks here. So yeah, it wasn't the smoothest or strongest marathon training cycle, but at least I got it done, and that's all that matters. And you know, we'll just see how things go on race day. Part of setting myself up for success is being realistic with my race goals. So after discussing things with my coach, my race goal will be a sub 350. So not a Boston qualifier, but something a little bit more manageable. More manageable than my goal at CIM. As the Stoics would say, control what you can control and just let things happen for the things that you can't control things you can't control, the weather. As of the time of this recording, there's rain projected, but I'm gonna have to let my anxiety go. And after, and they patched up that hole. You can't even tell that there was work done here.
I have to lean into things that I can control, which include getting enough rest before race day, fueling and hydrating adequately, and having my plumber on speed dial for the next thing to break in my house. I wish I had more uplifting moments to share in this vlog, but the reality is that it is hard to feel excited about every long run, especially since I didn't have much of a turnaround time between CIM and Surf City. I've been putting so much pressure on myself to get a Boston qualifier of a sub 340 that the mental burden hindered this training cycle like a physical injury. Now that I'm going to be going for a sub 350, I'm feeling much better. Remember, marathon training is not a sprint. I have to remind myself to pace myself, listen to my body, and most importantly, enjoy the journey. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more running vlogs. I'll see you at the Surf City Marathon.